Welcome to FM Corner. I'm Danny Case. I'm the Director of Relationship for Windy City Equipment. Today's episode, we're going to talk about five needs of customers involving communications. Seems really simple. Give them what they want. But it's more than that. What are their needs and how can you provide that in your communication and your team's communication to the customer? Everybody has customers. My company works for restaurants or other businesses where we provide service for them. That's our customer. In the facility management world, your customer is usually operations, the people who run the restaurants. So either way you go, everybody has customers. What does that customer need? They need friendliness. The more friendly you are, the more open you are, in having just a conversation with them, the more they are to open back up to you and give you details and talk about things that are important that you want to know and also break that ice. Nobody likes it when you call and the person says, hello, and that's it. And you're going, uh-oh, this is going to be a tough conversation. Well, you're on the defensive from the word go. And that may not be that person's personality, just may be the way they came across. So you want to be, whenever you're dealing with your customer, work from a program of friendliness. Second is authority. That person, that customer, wants to know that the person they're talking to has the authority to take charge of whatever the issue is and provide them all the information that they can. Does that mean you make decisions that are out of your norm? No, you don't. But you try to prepare yourself as best you can so you can make as many decisions as you can. And if you don't know the answer and it has to go above you, don't move that requirement to the customer. You say, let me go speak with someone on my team and I will get the answer for you and I will get back to you. That way you're still controlling the situation and in their voice, you're still the authority. As soon as someone higher calls that customer, they're not talking to you anymore. They're talking to the person above you. So you take the responsibility to get the answer and give it back. Third's understanding. You want a person that you're speaking to the customer that you understand what's going on and you understand where they're coming from. You don't have to agree but you understand why they're upset or what's going on in their building, anything like that. You have a sense of understanding, almost compassion, but it's really not. It's just understanding. Compassion says, oh, I'm so sorry, that never should have happened. Well, maybe that's not true. I understand there was a situation here. We're gonna do everything we can to get it fixed as quickly as we can. I didn't say I was wrong. I said, we're going to get it fixed as quickly as we can. Fourth is fairness. Customers want to know that the person on the other end is going to be fair in the situation. If you're speaking to the customer and the company or the department that you're representing has messed something up, tell them that. Let them know. Be honest. Be a human being. We made a mistake. My job is to help you get it fixed as quickly as I can. That's okay. So if you made the mistake or your company or your department, own it. Let them know that right out of the chute so they believe there's a sense of fairness in every situation. Don't take the approach right out of the chute without even listening of, well, I'm sure it couldn't be us. Well, it could be. Easily could be. So don't do that. Take that sense of fairness and that you're going to do whatever needs to get done to get the situation under control. And fifth is information. Get information from the customer. Something has happened. Something has went wrong. What, what are you looking for? What do you want? That's the easiest question. And maybe you can't give them what they want, but maybe you can. And that makes it go away easily. What do you need? What do you want? What information? How did this affect your business today by us not being there on time? What happened? How can I make that right? Give them the opportunity to express their emotions. Listen. Let them talk. If they're mad, they're mad. 
Let them talk. Take the time to listen. When they're done, think of a solution to their problem. Give them options. What options are out there that you could do? Let them pick from one. Typically, if you only give them one option, they'll say no. Give them options. Here's a couple ways we can go on this. You let me know which way works better for you. So get information as best you can. And when your customer does have issues, do these four things. Apologize up front. I'm sorry the situation happened. I'm here to help you do everything we can to get it fixed quickly. Apologize. Understand again their point of view. Put yourself in what kind of customer service you want when you're on the other side of the coin. So you go shopping and something goes wrong and you need to talk to customer service. How do you want them to act to you? That's how you should act to your customer. Third, solve the problems. And as I spoke before, give them options. If there's any way possible, give them more than one choice. People don't like just one choice. They like to have options. And fourth, take the extra step every time. Something as simple as the solution is resolved, customers calm down, got under control, follow back a week later. Is there anything else that I could do? Are we good? Thank you very much for working with me. Hope you give us another opportunity. Whatever you need to do, but take an extra step. Stay one step ahead of what they're asking for or need, and you'll have a great chance to calm that customer down. That's FM Corner for today. As we speak about communications, it involves the customer and also what to do when your customer's really upset. Thank you very much for listening today. Look forward to talking to you again next week.